Hey guys, I uh, just wanted to share a little bit of information on working on a injection pump for a 1105 Kubota. It's a Zexel, Zexel injection pump. Um, I had it apart and cleaned it. I've got two of the barrels and plungers and all the assemblies, the rollers, everything's in. Um, I wanted to go across some of the things that you can do um, and maybe how to put it back together. Maybe just so you have a basic working concept of what an injection pump does. Essentially, I would, I would say an injection pump is a lot like a motor. Um, you've got your barrels and plungers, which compress fuel, force fuel through the injectors, which barrel and your plunger. Uh, this pump came to me, these were stuck. Um, poor fuel, quality water, sitting for a while, caused this barrel and plunger to basically seize up and it had a drag in it. And um, cleaning it, soaking it, doing different things to try to get it so that it does work. Um, I did a couple little things here to play around with. I have another set of these barrels and plungers that are in good shape with no issue. Sometimes wear will cause these to leak through and you'll get some fuel in your crankcase. So these may be, may be shot, I don't know. But uh, back side of your barrel and plunger you have what's called the spill port. And when the cam goes down and the spring pushes the plunger down, it fills with fuel and it goes up compressing the fuel pushing it into the injector when the well the injector pops off um, when you try to get more fuel out of these what you do is you turn the barrel which is in the barrel holder from the top of the injection pump there's two screws that hold this to the pump housing and when you turn it there is it's called a helix and a vertical groove on your plunger. And as you turn it, you're able to get to a point where the helix cut is turned further, giving it more time to compress the fuel before it reaches the spill port, which is underneath the helix, or excuse me, it gets past the helix and then it returns the fuel back through the spill port and stops the compressing of the fuel. So what I've done is I've, in a quest to find more fuel and still achieve shut off, I cut the vertical groove a little bit more so that when the pump goes to the off position, hopefully it'll shut off and maybe I can get a little more fuel out of this pump. It's all, uh, all just in theory for what I'm doing. The big pump shops, there's there's no replacement to go to the big pump shops. They've they've got it down. They've got precision tools. I'm just trying to learn some stuff here, and maybe maybe I'll get lucky. Um, but I would definitely recommend if you're going to try to do something like this that you send it to a pump shop and have it calibrated after you do all your stuff. If you're that confident in what you did, so the assembly of barrel plunger housing. I use use a little bit of oil, uh, diesel fuel on the O-rings and you have a small pin that goes into your barrel holder. And if you look at the back of your barrel, you'll see that there is a line just above my finger that is been machined in and basically what that does is it aligns this barrel into this holder so that it will not turn and the pin if you take one of these apart is very small I, I doubt you can probably barely see it and there's a little little hole in the back of your holder that that goes into so you put that in there 
and I'm no expert, but the way I do it is I will just basically assemble this part first. So now your barrel holder is in there. You might be able to see the alignment pin in there, I don't know. Your barrel will go in next. Making note of the spill port going to the back side with the alignment pin. And these things can be a bit of a pain to make sure that the pin does line up. So when you get it together, there's a little tapered tapered part on the bottom of the barrel and you'll see it come through. So we got the barrel in there. The next thing we do is there's nothing holding that thing. So when you try to put your, your plunger in there, you'll basically force it out the top. Um, what I do is I, at that point, I will assemble the delivery valve the holder and everything into the pump. I have a cut delivery valve. You can kind of see there's a shoulder just below the surface of the seat and it's been removed. It's, it should help with fuel flowing through. Uh, the whole purpose of that is basically to slow the fuel flow down when it reaches its pop pressure. So, for the Zexel pump, the next thing that goes in is your delivery valve. Just goes down in there, real simple. There is a washer that goes next. And I've been putting just a little bit of oil down in there just to lubricate everything. And then we've got our delivery valve holder new o-ring and we got our delivery valve spring which forces the delivery valve back once the fuel delivery is over it goes in delivery valve holder So the top part is assembled. So at this point we can take a screw and just throw it in there. So that when we start working on the bottom, we don't accidentally force the whole barrel holder out of the pump. So next thing we gotta do is put our, when they say the rack moves back and forth, this is the part that the physical rack that your throttle or your governor assembly will attach to. Sorry about that, we had a little failure in the method I was holding the camera up with. So anyhow, we are to the point of assembling what controls the plunger. So put this up in there. And you can see 
there's three little balls up in here that the rack will hook into and they all move together to control the plungers and barrel, I guess the plungers, where they line up with the spill port. So next, we wanna make sure that we have the vertical cut facing the spill port when we assemble. Uh, if you do not do that, um, you won't get any fuel out of the pump because it'll never line line up with the spill port to fill. So, spill port towards the back of the pump, away from where you are putting in the fuel. just like a valve spring. This goes in next. The spring that returns the plunger. Call it your valve spring keeper in a sense. what rides on your camshaft. And then you have a pin that pops in and keeps tension on your spring. And that just, you push in on your roller, pop the pin in, and that part is assembled. So what holds those little pins in there, it's just a little metal clip that goes across them. Oh, they all gotta be lined up. So now that part of the pump is assembled, and from here it's pretty simple. Your rack has to be all the holes, or all the little balls have to go into the slots. back and forth and controls the barrels and plungers and you have to put your plate on tighten it down and basic assembly is done